Hello, everyone, and welcome to Friday. I have now had the new phone for a week. I have sp spent one week with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and I wanted to kind of give just a little update about some of what I've, what I've experienced, some of what I've learned, uh, some of what I've, I've liked. Um, so first things first, USB-C, my beloved, uh, as, as probably some of you could have guessed, um, the single biggest quality of life feature for me has actually been USB-C. Uh, as someone who films daily vlogs on their phone and has for some time, uh, being able to get the footage off quickly every day has been a big change. And it is something that I can already see, you know, looking ahead over the course of years, like it's going to save me so much time. So that has probably single-handedly been the biggest thing um, for sure. There's been some other little things that I, like, I guess I kind of knew about, but without having used the phone, I, I kind of forgot. So one example is the 120 hertz display. That was something that was added in, I don't know, some other phone after the 12. And it's just nice. It's nice to use a high refresh rate display. I haven't played any games on the phone. I'm sure it looks really nice with a game too, but just using a browser. And I know that sounds very stupid, but it's true. Like just using a browser, doing like normal like phone stuff, everything feels smoother. It feels more responsive just because you have a higher refresh rate. And that's very cool. Um, for the iPhone 15 Pro Max specifically, I've really enjoyed the the action button since the Pro and the Pro Max have the action button. And I have the way that I've utilized the action button is I have programmed it to whatever camera app I am shooting the vlog with that day, whether that be the default camera app. Uh, and if you choose the default camera app, you can actually have the action button take you to a specific section. So like if you want the action button to take you to video specifically, you can do that. Uh, I've also had it set to either Filmic Pro or the Blackmagic camera app. And that brings me into the, the last bit of this discussion, which is I have been testing. I have been doing so much testing. And you can probably tell, because if you've watched the vlogs over the past week, you'll know that they're all like a little different. They're all just a little bit different. They they may look a little different. They may sound a little different. The frame rate could be different. And that's because I've been doing a lot of experimentation. Not with like the style of the vlog. It's all very specifically um, just trying to test out the apps and the formats that I can that I can shoot in. And for some of these formats and for some of the apps, I am limited to 30 frames a second. So I just rolled with it. Instead of like excluding it from my tests, I just rolled with it. And some of them have been 30 FPS as a result. Um, you can shoot ProRes on the phones now, but if you use the camera app, you can only shoot 4K30 internally. If you want to use uh, 4K60 for ProRes, you have to attach external storage. And the fact that you can attach external storage is really exciting. But I'm also here to tell you that you don't actually need external storage to do 4K60 ProRes. You don't. Like, the camera app won't let you do it, but that doesn't mean that other apps won't let you do it. Like, for example, right now, I am filming this vlog, today's vlog, on the Blackmagic camera app, because I keep alternating apps. And in the Blackmagic camera app, you can shoot 4K60 in ProRes. And actually, it's even better, because you can choose the specific flavor, the, the bit rate, of ProRes. So in the camera app, it always shoots ProRes 422HQ, which, like, that's great that it's such high quality, which I believe is what the HQ is for. But it's it they're huge. They're really big. And that's a lot of bitrate that I don't really feel is 
completely justified for the phone. I mean, it's that's a subjective thing, I suppose. But then the Blackmagic camera app, first off, you can just shoot 4K 60 ProRes, which is nice, but also you can choose the specific flavor. I have it dialed down to LT. And uh, for those that aren't aware, there's like different like levels of ProRes, and it basically affects how much bit rate is going into the file. And in my opinion, uh, shooting ProRes LT on the phone makes way more sense because it still looks great, but the, the file sizes are more manageable. They're still going to be big because it's ProRes, but it's way more manageable. And the bit rate that you get, like shooting 4K, especially with ProRes, it's huge. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. And this is coming from someone that really likes to uh, push a lot of, um, you know, quality and, and stuff into what they make. Like, I, I cannot at all find a way to justify shooting on the phone in like HQ or, or four, 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 like Jesus, why? I, I don't, I don't personally understand it. Uh, because that's the sort of thing that, yeah, I would do that if I was shooting like a feature film on a cinema camera, but like on the phone, I'm like, eh, it's fine. It's probably fine. I mean, I guess if you, if you're shooting a feature film on your phone and space is not an issue, then go for it. But for, for most everyone else, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But I have been jumping around apps. Uh, and I, I mentioned the Blackmagic camera app. I do recommend that for anyone that has iOS and wants to do some some video stuff and have manual controls, it's free. It's free. You might as well download it because they give you so much control. You have nothing to lose. You might as well download it. Um, Filmic is the app that I typically use for the vlog on the phone. And uh, I... I I've, I've used it a little here and there over the last week. I'm really waiting right now for Filmic to implement Apple Log into their application. They haven't done it yet. I'm assuming it'll be within the next week. Blackmagic already has it, which I'm shooting this now in Apple Log. Um, and that was probably one of the coolest new features for me in the Pro iPhones this year is that you can shoot Log, which basically... The easiest way to explain that is it gives you more dynamic range. It, it allows you more flexibility in post to make your image look exactly how you want it. And also, as a bonus, by shooting in log this year, uh, they take all of the sharpening that Apple typically does to the image. It gets rid of it, so you can control that in post. And also gets rid of the dynamic tone mapping, which is something that has... I've always really disliked. I've always wanted that to be something I could turn off, and I finally can. So I'm really interested in shooting Apple Log as a result. Um, not to mention you, you just get so much control over it. Uh, but Filmic hasn't implemented that yet, so I'm kind of waiting to see how their implementation goes. All these apps have pros and cons. Like the camera app, the camera app's great. I mean, it really is. Um, Apple's done a really good job with it, but there is there is no manual controls. Um you, you, you have very limited abilities to uh, to control what you're doing, especially like shooting in log. So, you know, it, that's why I recommend if someone has a, a, a 15 Pro or Pro Max and you want to shoot stuff in log, like you might as well try out the Blackmagic camera app because you have so much more control. But the camera app is, the normal camera app is fine. Um, I'm just really interested to see what Filmic does. Because uh, even though I don't love the fact that their app is a subscription model, I I use it, you know. Like, I, I, I'm getting my money's worth out of the app for sure. So I'm curious to see what they'll do. Otherwise, I don't have a whole lot of other things to add after this first week other than I am just still testing a lot of stuff. I really like the 5X Zoom. However, I do sometimes feel like I miss the 3x zoom and that's just probably because I was so used to it like I had a very good feel for you know where I was and how far away something was and I could do 3x zoom and I kind of knew what the framing would be like and I have to like relearn that now because 5x zoom is different it's much more zoomed in so I'm still kind of getting a feel for that and, and getting used to what that's like but um I'm working on it it's just something that comes with time. But overall, am I happy with the purchase? Yes. This is such a huge update from the 12 Pro Max. And um, 
you know, I wouldn't recommend this phone to anyone that probably has a 14 or a 13 unless you're just really, really gung-ho about the video features. Um, but for anything older than that, like, I think this is a, a, a pretty reasonable step up. Uh, and especially if you're interested in the video stuff, like there's just some really good stuff here, really compelling things that I'm still figuring out. I'm still working on it. And there's one final thing I wanted to say that anyone that is interested, um, I have been keeping really intricate notes of the individual apps, the camera app, the black magic app and filmic and all of like what the quirks are. Uh, cause I've been testing them over the past week and I've been writing down things that I've noticed either while shooting or once I get the footage into post things, just little things, uh, you know, Oh, it, it did this weird thing or, or this is something I noticed. I'm writing down all this stuff in a note to kind of better understand these apps and remember like, Oh, well, when I shot it with this, it did this. And I will share that on the vlog at some point down the line. Once I've done more testing. Like I said, right now I'm waiting for Filmic to even add Apple Log. They haven't done that yet. Um, but I'm going to be continuing to shoot in different things and try it out and hopefully ultimately make a decision about what I want to shoot in going forward. That's the goal. Like, historically it has been Filmic Pro. It may very well continue to be, uh, but I at least want to have given, like, the Blackmagic camera app a, a, a fair shake and then also play around with the ease of use of the normal camera app. So I'll be sharing all of that at some point in the future. And I know that there, it's a small number of you, but there's a small number of you that are interested in that. And I'll, I'll try to make sure I title that video appropriately so you see it whenever it comes up. And that's it. That's it. That's all I have to, uh, to talk about. Uh, thank you for watching. If you got a 15, I hope that you are enjoying it as well. If you are using some of my experiences to judge whether or not you want to get one. Again, the thing that I'm going to leave you with is, you know, how important is video to you? That's, that's really the takeaway. Uh, and if it's been a few years, like if you're still rocking, like the, uh, like if a friend of mine had the XR or if you, if you have the XR or the 11 or something like that, like, absolutely. Yeah. This is, this, this will, this is night and day. Um, this is night and day. It doesn't feel super night and day from the 12, but as long as you're interested in the video side or even the photography side, because there's been a lot of advancements there, like I think it will feel like a, a very, a very substantial step up. So, something to consider. Okay, I'm done. Uh, I gotta get some sleep. Tomorrow, friends are gonna come over and we're gonna watch another movie. We loved it so much last week, we wanted to do it again. So we are. Thanks for watching. Let's meet back tomorrow. Shall we?